everybody, welcome to Empire TV. I'm Allie Craig and every single week we are bringing you another amazing story of a woman who is building her empire her way. Because guess what? Success isn't what everyone tells you it is. It isn't what all the mainstream media tells you it is. It's what you want it to be. And that's exactly why we're here at Empire TV. We want to share these stories with you so you can think outside the box, think creatively, and really envision and have the life, business, and brand you really want. This is the amazing Amy Loken. She has Mood Modular. Amy and I met years ago at an event, and one of the few women that, after all these years, is a total badass in all the amazing ways. You know it. That's why we get along. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> and we're still in business. Exactly, which is actually very rare, people. So, Amy, tell us how in the world you created Mood, because this isn't just this is your baby. This isn't just your brand. This is yeah. something all from you. Yeah, mine from concept to production, actually. So it's been a wild ride filled with a lot of, um, I guess, grit, um, resilience, and determination. So if you haven't caught by now, Mood Modular is about creating these interactive displays that you can use for trade shows, for speaking events, for social media props, for anything, anywhere, basically. And this is so not like the traditional trade show industry marketplace. How did you even come up with this concept? So a little bit about my background. I actually have a industrial design degree uh, and I literally went into it to do theatrical set design. Fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, strangely enough, ended up doing my thesis on furniture design and um, will not count the years, but several years later, um, developed this um, marketing display system. But really, honestly, it came from my 15 plus years in the shopping center industry doing retail design, visual merchandising. I literally developed it to replace myself in that industry. Well, and it's so interactive, which is so brilliant. It's so outside the box. But the blessing and the curse of being outside the box is that you are so outside the box mm -hmm. that it doesn't fit this industry niche or perspective. So I'm sure there was some struggles along the way with that one. Absolutely, and, and there still are. I mean, there, it, you know, success isn't a straight um, inclining, you know. It's not a mountain. I don't, know where, I don't know where the mountain acknowledge, it, you know, story came in. You fall down in. it a lot. I'm sure that's how but it But it's like, no, out. it's like Mario Brothers, man. It's like you just jump off the bloody cliff and then you have to climb up another one. It's not this Absolutely. mountain, people. No, <laughs> definitely not. You know, um, it was definitely a stumbling aspect uh, completely along the way in trying to figure out you know, I'm, I'm bringing this new product that I really do believe is, yes, first and foremost, trade shows, which everybody thinks of, but we really want you to use them in everyday places. We're viewed in a 360, 365 days a year. <laughs> it, it, or at least are. your brand should be. Well, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So why aren't we taking advantage of that and really engaging with people on a day-to-day -day basis where we're actually engaging with them as we would when we work with them as customers and clients. So for building your business, there's the level of you have to create this. So you had to find the way to actually source it, design it, and all that kind of stuff. But then there's also just the getting the word out there. What along the path maybe surprised you the most that was more challenging or maybe less challenging than you realized it was gonna be? You know, I really do believe our product, my product fits um, a niche. It fits between that retractable pull-up banner and Gosh. then those great big um, elaborate displays, erect sets type of thing <laughs> that you see yep. in Vegas. Yep. And my product fits that niche in between those two things. And I think the surprising and most challenging part was getting people to be comfortable standing out. Like, getting noticed. <laughs> like, well, why are you even at this event if you don't want to get noticed? Isn't that an interesting thing? I, I, I experienced that myself when it comes to branding. It's like, you're hiring me to make your brand better, to make your brand more profitable. And then I deliver that to you, and you're like, what the frickle just happened here, basically? Mm -hmm. So what do you think that's about? Where do you think that comes from? I, you know, honestly, it's about stepping into your own and stepping into your skin and being confident and believing that what you're doing 
is is worth what you're a either asking for or putting out there just yeah. in general and i think that's a really scary thing everybody uh, there's very few people who really want um to own that spotlight and you know you could say it's you know well you're you're an extrovert amy so that's easy for you to say um actually no yeah i'm like I'm i don't not. think you're an extrovert at all actually i'm not <laughs> you know so it's interesting but i think very few people whether you are or aren't is it's putting yourself out there and, and actually like getting noticed is is really hard for people so let's talk about that extrovert part because i think most entrepreneurs they feel like they have to be that extroverted, that cheerleader, that, you know, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And I'm like, whoa, because where Amy and I met, we, we were, um, I was speaking at this multi-tour event and there was actually a speaker there who was so cheerleader-like and it totally worked for her and God bless her, but yeah. my Lord have mercy, that's so not me. And I think that's a struggle that a lot of people have, especially a lot of female entrepreneurs have because we kind of, the idea of faking it till you make it. Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse on that one. It is, and I actually like to say fake it until you become it. Yeah. Because there is a, it's all in body language. So Amy Cuddy. I love you. Yep, Amy Cuddy, she, um, it's the best 20 minutes of um, TED Talk you'll ever listen to. But she really talks about how faking it until you become it. Where one day you, you just keep on going through the motions and all of a sudden you end up running into somebody who mm -hmm. you're like, oh my gosh, I remember how that used to feel. I don't feel like that anymore. I've actually become who I've been trying to. And I think deep down, we're all in there. So whether it's, you know, whether we're really actually faking it or not, we're just really trying to embrace who we are. I always like to say that it's about modeling what mm -hmm. you're really wanting to become because it's really just about programming your subconscious mind. As soon as your subconscious mind realizes you can do it, and if that's you doing it in front of the mirror in the bathroom, doing your presentation or talking about the sales, you know, doing your sales spiel to yourself or to your cats, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I'm not saying that ever happens to your me dogs. at all with the cats, your dogs, whatever it is. It then becomes, it just programs your subconscious mind. And for us women, that's actually one of our best advantages that we have because we are so intuitive that we do pick up on all those nonverbal cues. Very much so. And in but it, and in a lot of it starts with mental. So the you know, would you really say something to your best friend that you say that we say to ourselves half the time? No, let alone a stranger. You know, so it really does it becomes that whole self talk and you know Dressing for the job you want, not the job you have. I mean, it's a million different things that we've we've heard a million times, but, but they really are. Exactly, they really do work. Mm -hmm. So being an entrepreneur, though we all like to say business isn't personal, or at least that's the saying we all hear, it is. Absolutely. So for that personal side, what have you found that has surprised you the most, or what have you had to do personally to up-level yourself, to up-level your business? Uh, I think becoming the person that people see me as, their perception. You know, I talk about perception and first impressions and all these things, and, and I help people. You know, you do their brand, and I help bring it to life. You make, in it, a, you make it physical yeah. where you don't have a retail space. I, exactly. <laughs> that was one of the toughest things for me was actually, like, having somebody come up to me and, and seeing me stepping outside of myself and seeing myself through their eyes was challenging. You have to grow personally to really up-level your business and to really, because you, you've come so far. I mean, just even for how many years I've known you've mm -hmm. come so far. What have you done personally to help up-level yourself so that way you could grow your business? Uh, you know, I actually, part, I actually um, accepted a challenge, so to speak. It was challenged to me because it was a huge leap to be featured in three major publications last year, which um, was, uh, I don't know, there was actually probably a point in time that I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to be in like these, you know, Oprah and Entrepreneur and Fortune, but wow, it actually like happened. So it, that <laughs> that, was, that was crazy and scary and, and, it, and it made me have to step up a little bit. So how did you do that? Uh, you know, just really started to own, um, own myself and really, um, really, sadly, really start to believe that, you know what, I got this. 
But that's an interesting thing because I think it's a struggle most women have, but most women, it's like our hidden little secret. Like we're like, we're not gonna say anything about that. But the truth is, is that we don't own our, our status. We don't own our expertise. We don't own the accomplishments. I can remember my first book came out, hit bestseller. And my ex-husband at the time, he was just like, yep, the book hit bestseller. I'm like, great. What are we doing for dinner? Like it was like nothing. It was like nothing happened. And I think far too often we as women don't celebrate those accomplishments. Yeah, I, I would I would one hundred percent agree with that. We don't, you know. And um, ironically, my husband just asked me if I would do that again. <laughs> and um, my response was, I don't know, but if I did, I would uh, follow through with it differently. You know, I would take advantage. How so? Because I think most people could take advantage of their status a little bit better. Absolutely, press releases, just really, you know, th throwing it out there. Actually you know, telling your people, like, yeah, hey, tooting like, your hey, own horn, you know, yeah, throwing your own like, confetti. Oh, beep, beep, but <laughs> hey, check this out. You know, like, I did this, and if I could do it, by God, you could do it. You know, and I think it, it, there's a little bit of it, maybe it's my Midwestern, you know, upbringing and, you know, being, um, you know, a little bit more on the humble side of things at times where, you know, you, you don't beep that horn and you don't, you know, where, but at the same time, I didn't get here just, you know, because I stumbled into it. It was a lot of hard work and, failures and even though I don't like to use the word failure I think they were it's a journey and yeah. it's how we stumble through one journey that creates our next and there's a bazillion stumbles that we're going to make in the thousands of journeys that we're on while we're here completely and I honestly think it's a social story that I think most women have when it yeah. comes to we don't mind working hard we are so happy to be the worker bees but to stop and say hey look at me we don't want to be showy or prideful or put any other you know negative adjective or connotation to it but we would be really really secretly happy if everyone else would just like you know toot our horns, own horns for us basically absolutely but it doesn't exactly work that way mm, no so what is your next up level where are you bringing mood where do you want it to go where do i want it to go you know when i started mood i never um a didn't Im imagine it to get to where it actually is today. You know, it was it was meant to replace myself in a shopping center. So you were just supposed to walk in to any random shopping center and see these at, on kiosks and carts and things like that. And so for them to be actually in spas now and in everyday places, office like centers, office and centers, and stages, and, and trade shows, and yeah, social and, and media, I'm, and, and ironically on you know theatrical sets. <laughs> <laughs> wow talk about a full circle there <laughs> you know but it, it, it's one of those where it's like wow so you know, honestly the sky's the limit um, you know and maybe someday somebody's just gonna come to me and say you know what let's let let us take this to the next level would you want that would that be success to you to have that potential of the buyout offer um absolutely but success to me is probably a little different than it is to a lot of people success to me is did I leave? Um, did I leave a place better than I found it today? And be that in how I made somebody feel, or in helping them take their brand and make it uh, on something physical. Well, I think you're definitely doing that with mood when it comes to helping people bring their brands in the world. But also, what it's a cool feature is that you're also doing it for the planet. So you're even doing it for people when they don't even know it. So the coolest thing about it is that you can just completely, besides the fact, have multi sides, which you know I love because no one's brand is one dimensional, even in their messaging, depending upon how their audience is, but just even that you can completely reskin it and just, yeah. you know, keep the core and what minimal waste and how it's so eco-efficient for traveling and packing and all of that, like you're helping leave a bigger legacy. Why, thanks. See, did you did you even stop and think that way? You know, I, d I did a little bit. You know, 3M needs to make me some recycled vinyl, but um, yeah, come but on, honestly, 3M, come yeah, on. There, come on. Let's go. You know, <laughs> but honestly, yeah, it is, once you have the structure, it's just about keeping it updated. And I think I saw so much waste happening in the shopping center industry over the years of you know signage and things coming through that you didn't hold up and it's like well or brands that had two different um 
souls. Depending almost. upon the audience you're talking yeah. to, depends on which foot you lead with. A absolutely. We all have different marketing speaks. So why aren't we able to s switch them up? And then, you know, for, you know, a lot of our columns, you can actually turn them inside out. So you could have two completely different brandings. And so that was really an important thing for me in, in the whole development. And as we, you know, go through and continue on, you know, our development. I love that. So if you could tell your younger self one thing about what success is or looks like or feels like, what would you tell her? Mm. Well, A, it feels amazing when you achieve something that you um, had just as a dream and to never stop dreaming. My mom always said I was a dreamer and I will take that to heart. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Amy, for joining us. And more importantly, thank you for sharing your empire story and what success in all of this looks like to you because it isn't a straight line and it isn't the same for everybody. You don't have to do what everyone else says. You can totally do your own thing if that's creating, seeing a need and literally creating from scratch what how you want to fulfill it. It's so awesome and inspiring to see. So we will bring you another empire story next week, sharing another story with you from another amazing female entrepreneur. See you then. Yeah.